President Trump recently said that your dealings with China were so egregious that in times gone by, the punishment would have been death. That's right, he said that. As much as these comments are directed at me, it's also directed at the institution of the military. Um, and there's, there's 2.1 million of us in uniform. And, and the American people can take it to the bank that all of us, every single one of us, from private to general, we're loyal to that Constitution and we'll never turn our back on it no matter what, no matter what the threats, uh, no matter what the humiliation, no matter what. If we're willing to die for that document, if we're willing to deploy to combat, if we're willing to uh, lose an arm, a leg, an eye uh, to protect and, and support and defend that document and protect the American people, then we're willing to live for it too. So I'm not going to comment directly on those, those things, but I can tell you that uh, this military, uh, this soldier, me, will never turn our back on that Constitution. Now, Milley has become a uh, villain in MAGA world for a variety of reasons. One of them is that they see him as insufficiently bigoted against LGBTQ members of the armed forces. That's a subtext that Republican Congressman Paul Gosar made explicit when he wrote in his weekly newsletter, quote, in a better society, quizlings like the strange sodomy-promoting General Milley would be hung. I bet you, you hadn't heard that <laughs> until now, most of you. Yes, he meant hanged. The context of that statement where Gosar called for the execution of the highest ranking military officer in the country, comparing him to a Nazi collaborator, Quisling, was about, of course, January 6th. And here I think we kind of unlock the mystery. Like, what on earth is going on? What is going on? Why are Republicans waging war against the military, the top brass? January 6th, more than anything else, that is the original sin of the military's top brass for MAGA Republicans. And I believe all the bigotry is sincere, definitely part of the right-wing meltdown. The origin of this sustained assault, particularly on the top brass, this garbage about the military being too woke, is mostly a smokescreen to hide their disdain for the fact that in their view, the upper echelons of the US Armed Forces were insufficiently loyal to Trump's coup. I mean, that's really what it comes down to, right? Leaders of the armed forces of these United States, the ones who take an oath to protect and defend the U.S. Constitution, upheld that oath and took that oath seriously at a dire moment, at one of the most dire moments since the Civil War. And they refused to be the armed tip of the spear for Trump's attend, attempt to end that constitutional republic. That is their sin. That is their crime. That is why they are now the enemy of this MAGA faction. Ergo, the military is woke. Ergo, the military is the deep state. Ergo, Republicans are waging war on the military. And all of their leaders, who are not entirely in the tank for Trump's war on democracy, those who can't be trusted to be loyal, they must be purged. And to be clear, this is not just speculation. It's what Trump is saying out loud, promising that he is going to do. Here's my plan to dismantle the deep state and reclaim our democracy from Washington corruption once and for all, and corruption it is. First, I will immediately reissue my 2020 executive order restoring the president's authority to remove rogue bureaucrats and I will wield that power very aggressively. Second, we will clean out all of the corrupt actors in our national security and intelligence apparatus, and there are plenty of them. He is saying, I will purge the security forces of the United States of those who are not loyal to me and my authoritarian aspirations. He's saying it plain as day. He's promising it. The question in front of American voters is, do you want to give Trump the chance to purge the military so he can finish the job he started on January 6th? 